Can a man walk through a door and find himself in another part of the world? My guest was taught the secrets of supernatural travel and how you can do this too. Next on this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. I had an experience that was so amazing to me. You see, I just sit in my easy chair and I listen to music. It's called soaking and I get kind of lost in the spirit. It's wonderful. Well, I went to Mobile, Alabama, went into a hotel and when I was checking in, the woman said to me, you were here before, weren't you? And I said, no, ma'am, I've never been to Mobile, Alabama. She said, yes, you were. What is your name? I said, Sid Roth. She said, yes. And you were wearing the same outfit you have now. And I know you were here because you were saying the same thing you just said to me. And then she said, I'm getting freaked out. Are you sure you've never been here? Well, she was getting freaked out. <laughs> Let me tell you, I was getting freaked out. I have Bruce Allen here who has been commissioned by God to teach you about what the Bible refers to as translation. What is translation, Bruce? I said translation has a number of nuances to the meaning, but... Uh, as far as the Christian is concerned, it could speak of being caught away in the spirit in the, the realm of heaven where we understand God to be. And then it also speaks of a transportation, a geographic shift from one location to another supernaturally. For instance, uh, example of the first one, let's say, uh, you're uh, driving a car and it takes X number of hours to get to a place and you get there shorter where time is literally compressed. Give me an example of that's how that's happened in your life. I grew up in a little town outside of Seattle called Edmonds, Washington, right on the beach. And from Edmonds, Washington to Spokane, Washington is about five and a half hour drive. On a good day, if you're really pressing four and a half that, and there's no traffic for that, because you're going over mountain passes. And the Lord had been challenging me about whether an individual could be translated by faith. And so when I finally came to the conclusion, this is the word of the Lord, I said, yes, sir, I believe so, and I'm ready for my first lesson. So I prayed over the car that morning with my friend, and we began to drive from Edmonds to Spokane. And I remember every turn in the road, every exit, we stopped for lunch as we normally do. And we did that trip in less than two hours. Less than two hours. And how long should it have taken? Five and a half hours. Five and a half hours. Now, that's my kind of transportation. But you said the Lord challenged you about translation by faith. Tell me about that. It was early in 2000, yeah, 2000, that... One morning I woke up and the Holy Spirit asked me, can a man be translated by faith? And I had no concept of that at that point, was not even wired that way, if you will. And so knowing that when God challenges me, it's for the benefit of myself as well as others, I said, yes, sir, I believe so. He said, good, prepare. And I said, well, Lord, how do I prepare for that? He said, I just told you by faith. And that began an adventure that I have been walking with the Lord ever since. And it's been a progressive as far as understanding and revelation of how this is doable and how it operates, as well as experiential in seeing these things take place. Tell me about Richard from Kenya. I have a, a friend named Joe. He's also from Kenya. And I had heard a story about a gentleman named Richard who had had an experience of geographic translocation or transportation. And so I asked Joe, I said, is this true? He said, oh, I know this Richard. He's my friend. And this is the story. Richard one day was told by God, he said, I want you to go to another country. He said, I have something I want you to do there. And this man in his uh, excitement and zeal packed his suitcase, went to the airport. And when he got to the airport, he set his suitcase down. And he said, now what do I do, Lord? Because I have no money and I have no passport. The Lord said, go into the men's room. 
go into the third stall on your left. And he did that, and he said, now what, Lord? He said, worship me. So this man, Richard, lifted his hands to heaven and began to worship the Lord. And after a few minutes of time, the Lord said, okay, now pick up your suitcase and go. And when he walked out of that men's room, he was in the airport in Paris. Just out of curiosity, do you know how he got back? No, I never did ask, as a matter of fact. <laughs> well, did you hear that? He had no passport. He had no money. And he goes into the restroom and he walks. Again, that's my way to travel. Now, you literally received a commission from God and a mantle to teach on transportation. Tell me about that. When I first had that first experience, I sat down for about six months because I was chewing on that and studying the, uh, the Bible and how this could be. And I finally said, Lord, why are you teaching me? Why are you telling me this? He said, I've called you to be a forerunner, to teach my people at the end of the age how to do this by faith because it will be necessary. Uh, we'll get back to that in a little while, but uh, you teach on these subjects of transportation at churches and entire churches are having these. Tell me the most people that have participated as you've been teaching on this at one congregation and what happened? This was a large home meeting in a, a, a home in Singapore and we had 85 people there. And after we taught on this, I was told by the, the pastors that had invited us that 85 of those people, which was the, all of them, including the children, had an experience where they were caught up into the third heaven, the realm of God, and had experiences that changed their lives drastically. And, and you believe these, this is going to be mandatory for the last days? I'm convinced of the fact that if we don't grab hold of the Word of God in the full extent of what God is speaking of, we're going to be in dire straits. It's going to be more difficult to travel which is specifically what the Lord told me, that at the end of the age, it's going to be extremely difficult to move geographically, to do what he's told us to do. There's going to be great persecution and oppression. And we're going to need to understand the mandate of the word so that we can accomplish what he said to do, and it'll be done supernaturally. Wait till you find out how Bruce went to another country supernaturally. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Hello, Sid Roth here with Bruce Allen. And Bruce, you are moving in the spirit more and more and even better. You're teaching people. You're equipped. Now, I've heard of people getting mantles. You literally were given this mantle to teach people on, on transportation and translation? I was given the commission by the Lord when he spoke to me very clearly that this was what he's calling me to do right now is to release people into their full inheritance as a believer in God. And part of that is this supernatural transportation or translation. And so as we have pursued the Lord in that and, and believed God for this, we have seen astounding things happening in the lives of individuals as well as our own lives. Because as you know, the more you release, the more you receive. And so there's been a progression. And the Lord told me this, the first phase of what we're teaching will be people will be caught away in the spirit and have those type of experiences. But the second aspect or the second phase of this will be people will be released physically to geographically go from one region to another as God directs to do what God says to do. Now, I meet many people that are gifted in the spirit. Uh, and even before they became believers, uh, they didn't understand like gifts of prophecy, but they were, they were actually working. They just didn't understand what was going on. But in your case, you were not naturally gifted in this area. You, you accessed everything you do by faith. Explain that. I know there was some type of gifting, but I had no outlet or no understanding of any of that. Even when I became a believer in, in uh, Yeshua, the first scripture passage the Lord gave me was Jeremiah 1. Before I formed you in the womb, I sanctified you and ordained you a prophet to the nations. Well, in 1973, anybody I asked what that meant had no concept. Why are you going to be an evangelist or a pastor or a missionary? And, and I had no idea. And so... I had to begin to pursue the Lord diligently with passion and discover 
the fullness of what the Word of God has to teach in, in every area. And so, no, I was not naturally gifted in, in the majority of what I'm talking about now, but I was challenged by God. And because of that challenge, it provoked me to press in and discover the fullness of okay. what he had. Do you believe, and this, this is the important question, Bruce, do you believe that everyone that knows the Messiah can operate in these supernatural areas that you're describing? Absolutely. 1 Corinthians 14.1 says to earnestly desire spiritual gifts. So the key to anybody walking in the fullness of anything God has is the passion to pursue that particular gift. And so this is available to anybody that believes in Messiah. You know, listening to your tapes, uh, you, you quote John 3.3 3 about seeing is our birthright. Explain John 3.3. 3. Absolutely. Nicodemus came to, to Jesus at night because he was afraid of the opinion of the, the rest of the Pharisees and the Sanhedrin. And, and Jesus said to Nicodemus, Nicodemus, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So what he was saying is, Nicodemus, if you're born again, you can see the kingdom. That has many facets of meaning, but the most prevalent is that as believers, one of the aspects of the language of heaven or the voice of God are visions or pictures. And we have neglected that aspect of our spiritual growth, if you will, by somehow, by osmosis, believing God only speaks in words. So everyone can see the kingdom of heaven and move in the, in the gifts of a seer. Well, tell me about the time you went to Latvia by faith. That was funny. That was, uh, I had a sense in my spirit, we were doing a New Year's conference, and I had a sense in my spirit that something supernatural was going to take place. So I had a good friend of mine, a, a professional photographer. I said, you take pictures. I don't, I just have this feeling. We're going to catch something. I have no idea. Well, I told the pastors what the Lord had been challenging me with at that season, not because I was going to teach it, we were just talking, but they stood up and announced Bruce is going to teach on translation by faith tonight, which put the fear of God in me because I sure. was by no means ready for that. But because the Lord said, you're under authority, do as they've asked. Well, during worship, I'm praying and seeking the Lord, and all of a sudden, I'm caught away in the spirit above the earth. It's nighttime in Eastern Europe over there. And I'm looking down at a country, and I said, Lord, is that Lithuania or Latvia? He said, Latvia. When he said that, we began to descend through the clouds in through the roof of a, an apartment complex, and I stood in front of a door at number 212. And I heard a little girl crying, so I walked to open the door. I walked into the back, and in the back bedroom, this little girl named Natalia, a Russian girl, was kneeling down and weeping beside her bed, praying to the Lord. Well, I didn't speak Russian, but this is a supernatural experience, so language is no barrier with God. And when I found out she was desperate because her parents could not get a job, they had no money, no food, and they were about to be evicted. And so I got to minister to her, comfort her heart, pray with her, and I was brought back into the meeting where I was, and at that point I was teaching. And what's interesting is the photographer caught the picture of me looking transparent that they could actually see through me. He didn't show that picture to me for six months because he didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> and it was six months before I remembered he was there to take pictures and catch something supernatural. Well, Bruce is saying that we all have this access. And he's also told me he's going to demonstrate it in the next segment. Don't go away. We'll be back right after this. Hello, word. Sid Roth here with Bruce Allen. And uh, Bruce, uh, had you ever been to Sydney, Australia before this experience? No, I had never been. I always wanted to go. Okay, tell me what happened. After that experience with the car, uh, about six months after that, I, as I had been studying and praying, I said, Lord, I, I think I'm ready for my next lesson. Well, I was in my room worshiping the Lord and praying and meditating on the scriptures that have to do with translation when suddenly I was caught up into the heavens, again above the earth, saw the stars, and I'm standing up there hearing all of creation worship God, which was a unique experience in and of itself. That sounds so wonderful. I wish I could do something like that. Well, you can. 
I know, you promised me. <laughs> We're going to find out. <laughs> okay. And so, as I'm standing there, I looked off to my right and I saw a doorway open, a portal, if you will, and it was just a, a doorway of light in the fabric of space-time. And I got a nudge by the